Now, <clears throat> I want to give you a sentence. It goes like this. My consistent thoughts become my reality. And what I have just done with that one sentence is I have taken the entire field of psychotherapy, psychology, et cetera, et cetera, and I've reduced it down to one sentence. If you look at all the various techniques for emotional healing, et cetera, and personal performance growth, and all the other things in that general field, what all the techniques try to do is to shift someone's thoughts so they have a different reality, okay? If you think about something differently, if the writing on your walls is different than the writing that you have, your reality, the way you see the world, will be different still. If you grow up in this world as being somebody that should be seen and not heard, that is one form of reality. If you grow up as Wonder Boy, that's a different one, isn't it? Altogether different, same world. Same world, you'll perceive them differently. And so, um, if we can somehow change the writing on our wall, that is our consistent thoughts, then we're going to shift our reality. Now, EFT does that quite well to the extent that it takes care of the, the negativity that is in the way of our, of our more natural, joyous nature. Uh, and quite often we will find, uh, you know, we will, some will have some, some very negative, you know, anger or, or trauma or something like that, and we'll use EFT with it, and it just sort of, it's not in the way anymore. And what, it, what happens is it, allow, it allows the more joyous underlying natural uh, uh, persona to, co to come on up and people are more joyous and they will have different perceptions and they will see the world differently. But that's not, the, that's not that's, and that's good. That's not the same thing as installing new ways to go. See, EFT does not install anything new. It allows the natural to show up. But if you want to install something, if you want to install a better perception of earning money, for example, or install a thinner you, you know, from a weight loss point of view, or install, you know, any, anything else you'd like, to, you'd like to move towards. That's what the palace of possibilities is all, because you're going to have to change the writing on your walls uh, to move you along in that direction uh, more precisely. <clears throat> Let me see. Who am I going to, who am I going to use for this? Who am I going to use for this? Let me see. Who am I going to use? Who am I going to use? Who am I going to I'm going to, I'm going to pick somebody out of here, okay? <laughs> I haven't heard from you. Would you mind coming up? Do you have a fear of public speaking? No. Being seen and not heard and all that? Come on up. Come on up. I'd like to introduce you to the Tooth Fairy. Come on up. <laughs> Thank you for being brave. Can we have a hand for our Tooth Fairy for Jane? Okay. <laughs> now, now, you just need to hold that, okay. Jane. Okay, so you're going to be the Tooth Fairy, okay? Now, when I was a young boy, why don't you just stand back just a little bit if you could. When I was a, when I was a young boy, I believed in the Tooth Fairy, okay? You, you too. You believe in the Tooth Fairy as well. All right. And um, when I would lose a tooth, in fact, how many here believe in the Tooth Fairy? I'm yeah, curious. Okay. See, this is your friend, right? And when I would lose a tooth, I'd put it under my pillow, okay? And uh, lo and behold, the Tooth Fairy would come, take, take my tooth, and uh, leave me a nickel or a dime or something like that. Big deal, okay? Uh, I did notice at one time the tooth fairy somehow or other didn't take the tooth because I don't think my dad could get his hand underneath my pillow <laughs> far enough. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, uh, if you're a tooth fairy, so you have to act like when you have to go to tooth fairy. See, see, tooth fairy is good doing like tooth fairies. Okay. Now, let me ask you. Let me ask you something. Me, can we have a microphone here? I'm going to ask you a question over here. Okay. When you were growing up, did you believe in the tooth fairy? Yes. Okay. Um, was the tooth fairy true to you? Yes. Okay. Um, is it true now? No. Oh. But when, when it was true to you, when the tooth fairy was real to you, did you respond as though she was real? Yes. Okay. Because you take, like I did, you take your tooth and put it in, you know, whatever. Okay. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, let me ask Margo here. Did you do the same thing? Yes. Did you believe in the tooth fairy? Yeah. And as long as the tooth fairy was written on your walls, it was part of your truth, right. you responded accordingly. Right. Was the tooth fairy real? Yes. Yeah. It was real at the moment. Yeah. Is it real in reality? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> 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 well, if you lost, I'm curious something, if you happened to lose a tooth today? I would not put it under my pillow. <laughs> okay. I'm, 
<laughs> I'm, just, I'm just curious, all right. All right. Well, um, how many of you, I'm going to ask everybody the same question, when you were young, even at the time, believed in the tooth fairy? Let's see your hands. Okay. And so you would respond according to this truth. Truth was, you know, it was your truth, was it not? Yes, 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 good, okay. Uh, and when you didn't believe in it anymore, it's no longer the truth. Is that correct? And you don't, take, you don't put your tooth under the pillow. You don't do that. What about the boogeyman? By the way, we're going to go to the boogeyman for a second. Could we have a hand for our tooth fairy? Thank you, John. <laughs> but what about the boogeyman? Okay, what, what about the boogeyman? Uh, let me ask Jojo right here. Who's the boogeyman? I mean, was the boogeyman real for you? Yes. It was oh, scary. Yeah. It was dark. Whenever it was dark, the boogeyman was there in your room. Yeah, I'll tell or you what in the happened. hallway. Yeah. And, and I would lie in bed at night, you know, and, and, and the shadows of the leaves, you know, with the moonlight coming in and stuff would make things move on the walls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was the boogeyman. Okay. Or the boogeyman was out there or something. The boogeyman was making the, even if they were leaves to me, the boogeyman was making the, you know, he's going to come and get me. The boogeyman. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the boogeyman, as long as I had belief in it, as long as the boogeyman was written on my walls, I'm going to respond to the boogeyman, okay? And, and that's real to me. Same thing with Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny, <laughs> okay? And all of that. But eventually, do we not um, no longer need those? I mean, somehow or other, somebody comes along and tells us otherwise, and we get other written writings on our walls about that. People say, oh, grow up, you know, you don't be such a child, you don't, you don't believe in the tooth fairy, do you? Okay, and eventually, nah, we don't believe in the tooth fairy. And our truth changes, okay? And our consistent thoughts now change, and our reality now changes, and the tooth fairy and the boogeyman and Santa Claus and so on and so forth are no longer in it. I suggest to you that we are carrying around within our thoughts, our consistent thoughts now, all of us, Tooth fairies. <laughs> they will someday, we will, they will seem very real to us now, but someday we'll look back and go, it was a tooth fairy. Mm 